Hey everyone, I'm Dom Laforge, and I am, as always, very excited to present to you with my next review, which is going to focus on books four, sorry, chapters four and five of Legend of Korra book two. So, yeah, basically what we were presented with was the surprising revelation that Unalak is a traitor, because, yeah, no one saw this coming. However, props on the writers for A, making this so easy for us to figure out, but also for making this a very interesting dilemma between, I shouldn't say dilemma, more like a struggle between two brothers. When I first, when we first had the brother from Tamarok, I was like, whoo, whoa, lots of tension up in her, and yeah, I, I was actually really excited to see what was going to go down between these two brothers. And from that specific moment, I wouldn't really have guessed that Unalak has, excuse me, that Unalak has been trying to sabotage his brother this entire time. But, uh, I mean, it's been a few more episodes, and now it's not exactly, as I said, surprising that Unalak is a traitor. However, I'm really excited to see what the writers are going to do with this, how they're going to explain why Unalak has usurped his brother in the first place, and especially what they're going to do with other family struggles, because come on, this entire season up to episodes 4 and 5 has been family struggles. I mean, Tenzin and his family, Korra and her parents, Unalak and Tamarok. I mean, there's no end to the family struggles thus far. Though, to be fair, we've seen happy endings in terms of Tenzin and his family, also with Korra and her parents. The last issue, I guess, to res that's left to be resolved is between Unalak, Tamarok, and Korra, mainly these three characters. So I'm really excited to see how the writers are going to fit everything in and how they're going to explain what has been happening thus far. Really, whew, really excited. But while we're on the topic of drama, let's not forget about the dark spirits. I mean, come on, this book is called Spirits. Something is going on in the spirit world that's creating these dark spirits. And we know it's not all because of the South, because Korra has at least supposedly fixed the problem at this, like at the South Pole. Why are these spirits still attacking? And at first I thought it was because Unalak was controlling them, but it seems that he actually has no power over these spirits. As I think it was Eska said, they are out of control. So, actually that's in episode 6, but you guys know what I mean. These dark spirits are crazy. And what? Korra seems to be the only person who can actually deal with them. So I don't think, it seems that Unalak didn't lie about that at all actually. The dark spirits are a huge problem. And what is Korra going to do about them? I, oh, I don't know, but I am psyched to see what the writers have in store. Now one last, I should say one last thing, but another interesting development that we got in this episode was the breakup between Korra and Mako. Now, if we had this season, like this book, right after book one, I'd be like, no, no, why would you break these two up? They just got together. This is unfair. Writers, get them back together pronto. That would be me. But after everything that's happened, after seeing their very dysfunctional relationship, where Korra's trying to wear the pants but has no idea what exactly that entails, and Mako's basically confused because Korra doesn't know what she wants, like this, like their relationship has kind of just been a bit of a mess, and I'm actually surprised it lasted six months instead of just three. So, so basically, all in all, I'm not exactly surprised that this breakup happened at all. And... I know I'm kind of betraying the Makora fan base here when I say that, I don't know, when I saw them fighting, I was basically wondering, hey, Mako, wasn't it easier to be with Asami? Yeah? Didn't you guys have, a, have an easier time with things? So, yeah. Basically, I don't know who to root for. Should Mako get back together with Asami? Should he try to fix things up with Korra? I am so lost. I do not know who to cheer for, but all I know is that Cora really does need to get her, I guess, her issues in order if things are going to work out with Mako. That's all I have to say. Lastly, we've got Bolin, basically, who is Varric's pet. 
and this doesn't sit well with me, especially since, uh, I don't know, it's just that Bolin has had such a huge problem with his backbone. Basically, he has none. He, ever since the beginning of this book, he hasn't ever, excuse me, he hasn't really ever thought for himself. He's basically floundering around trying to figure out what exactly he's supposed to do. And he's been fine so far just basically doing what anyone else tells him to do. And I am not okay with this. Not okay with this because Bolin is supposed to be the earthbender. He's supposed to have the backbone. In fact, Toph being like, wait, how many years old was she in the first in like the last series like 13 like she's got more toughness in her little pinky than Bolin has in his entire buff body I'm just kind of like Bolin what's going on here now don't get me wrong I love that he's lighthearted I love that he's so sweet but at the same time I'm kind of like Bolin please find yourself and please do it quickly that pretty much sums up all my thoughts regarding episodes 4 and 5 uh, seriously, I will talk to you guys real soon for episode 6.